Tonight it's my privilege to introduce our speaker who comes to talk to us about something out of this world. I mean, at least out of the Earth's world. Our speaker has extensive experience in carbonate petrology and working with algae and stromatolites and very, very old rocks. And she studies how these rocks interact and show us a story about how the early life on Earth influenced our atmosphere that we're very concerned about today and how the atmosphere has also influenced the life forms that were able to live at that time. She's had a wealth of experience and she has done some fantastic, neat things that I've gotten to discuss a bit with her. I don't want to spill too many of, of the surprises that she has for us, but she does have degrees from MIT and she's been a professor at UC, UC Davis for many years. She does neat things with her students that help them visualize 3D. Does anybody have trouble seeing in 3D? No, you all have two eyes, don't you? She does it with a, a visionarium that, believe, that allows her to show her students the depositional environment in a 3D immersive way that we'll get to see a little bit of tonight. Please help me welcome Dr. Dawn Sumner. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, we're actually going to start with a 3D movie. Um, as, as Dave mentioned, um, I've uh, been involved uh, with uh, 3D visualization at UC Davis through the Keck Caves. And if Juan can, Juan will start the movie, I think, in a minute. Um, but I'm really here representing the Mars Science Laboratory team and the rover Curiosity. And that's uh, thousands of engineers and over 450 scientists. And it's really uh, a pleasure to be here. But anyway, when we uh, get the movie up, I'm going to start by introducing the Curiosity rover and some of the instruments on it. And then I'm going to talk about the latest geological results we have from the rover. Um, so we're going to start with the rover, and here it goes. This is our first 3D large screen movie, and we didn't know it was going to work. This is our rover. It's about 2 meters tall. You can't use pointers We're using heritage from the Burr rovers that landed in 2003, like the uh, boogie rocker system for the wheels. Our rover is powered uh, with plutonium decay, which produces heat that's converted into battery power. And, um, and then we're using a lot of communications. So the black stovepipe at the back is a low gain antenna, and the hexagonal um, uh, thing on the top is uh, the high gain antenna, which is what we use. We have a lot of cameras. <laughs> and. Um, the one called Marty was taking images as we descended, and so we have a whole series of, of images as we descended, and um, someone's using the laser point. <laughs> Don't do it without your 3D glasses on, because it doesn't work so well. <laughs> um, so we actually saw it uh, stir up dust and gravel. We ended up with gravel on the deck of the rover. We have a lot of cameras, so the mass cams are the two with the square coming out the front. We have one that's wide angle and one that's telephoto. The nav navigation cameras we use to make a 3D mesh uh, to drive the rover on, and then CapCam has a camera in it, but it's also a laser, and it zaps rocks at a distance and vaporizes them and looks at the light that comes out of the plasma and uh, gives elemental composition. We have one more scientific camera, which is our geologist hand lens, uh, Molly. We can put that up uh, against the rock and get about uh, uh, 15 microns per pixel, but it also focuses at a distance, and these self-portraits of the rover are taken with that camera, and I'll show one of those later. Uh, you all know that we like to know the composition of the rocks, not just what they look like. So in addition to the ChemCam, we have the alpha particle x-ray spectrometer, we have to put that up against a rock. That gives us the elemental composition again, uh, which is very important uh, for uh, a lot of the work. And then that's been on all the other rovers. 
um, that we've had or a variant of it. What we really have that's different on this rover are a uh, mass spectrometer, actually three in one, called SAM, Sample Analysis of Mars, and Kevin, which gives us X-ray diffraction, which actually gives us mineralogy. These samples, you have to drill and put a powder into them, and so we have a drill on the end of the arm, and it's actually really hard to replace graduate students and undergraduates with a rover to process samples. So getting <laughs> powder into those instruments is really hard. Um, but we've done it twice now, uh, three times. So we also monitor the environment with REMS, which measures wind speed, um, air temperature, humidity, and uh, ground temperature, which tells us a lot about our local environment. And we also use uh, RAD, a radiation um, instrument that measures ultraviolet radiation and uh, 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 energetic particles. And we just got our first two papers uh, published uh, on science last Friday. One of them is radiation on the trip to Mars, which is related to human exploration. Then we have uh, calibration targets uh, for MassCam, ChemCam, MOLLE, APXS, uh, instruments like that. There's one more instrument, DAN, Dynamic Albedo of Neutrons, which isn't in this CAD model. Um, it's on the back of the rover, though, and it produces neutrons using a lot of oil uh, company technology and looks at the interaction of neutrons with the ground beneath the rover to get uh, an idea of the, the hydration state uh, about a meter, meter under the ground. So this is the, the tool that we have. The prime mission is, to, is designed to last two years, but the MER rover opportunity was designed to last three months and is still going ten years later. So uh, Spirit, the other rover, um, uh, got stuck in the sand and lost power at, in its seventh year. And so um, we don't know how long this rover will last uh, with the energy. Uh, it can uh, last decades, and so it's really a matter of how, how long the uh, uh, hardware actually lasts. And we've had such um, uh, good engineering and so much dedicated work in it and care running the rover uh, that we hope it'll last a long time. Um, and so I want to make sure I thank Oliver Kralos, who is uh, a research scientist at UC Davis who's done a lot of the 3D software. And, and uh, if you're interested in that, um, uh, please, please look him up and, and the Ket Caves work. And then uh, the JPL uh, provided the CAD model for the rover. And you guys are the first, except for a few of us who checked this out, to have seen the rover on a big screen in 3D. It was really fun, fun to do that. <laughs>